Hello everyone, welcome back to the Shintar Higashi Show with Peter Yu. Thank you first and foremost to our sponsors, Jason and Levon. Yep. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. Join thanks, us guys. on Patreon. Be a <laughs> sponsor. We'll right? give you yeah, a shout we'll... out. Yeah, sponsor shout out. Patrons and join our you get to join our Discord server. Yes. And talk to a bunch of people. About yeah. judo, BJJ, all kinds of grappling. Yeah. Yep. All right, so today we're gonna, it's a follow up episode to our previous episode about BJJ for intermediate judo class. We're gonna talk about judo for intermediate BJJ. So, like, yeah. thing, your blue belts, purple belts, yeah. saw some judo videos, and hey, maybe I should do learn some of those takedowns. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's the primary demographic of guys who wander off into judo to get an edge, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> a lot of blue belts do that. Yeah. Just to just get that's an edge, right? Like, like if you just do pure BJJ at that stage, yeah, yeah you you usually work, yeah. I think you're the in the main market demographic where you're a mid thirties guy who's doing blue belt division tournaments, yeah. right? Uh, and then the both of those guys want to take the other person down. They still have this like this is the thing, right? They don't have yeah. a very very refined guard game yet. If you're right. intermediate. Mm -hmm. Black belt, they know what they want, what they want to do. Most guys are great guard players. So it's yeah, a lot they, easier for yeah. the super high level guys to pull guard, sweep, get those points, and keep it. Yeah. Blue belts have a much more top dominant game. Mm. Always. They still have like top is better. So they're much more likely to engage in like this takedown, battering yeah. man sort of a thing. <clears throat> so that's when they're like, oh man. I don't really know how to take this person down. Yeah. Right? And then double legs are very yeah. difficult too because yeah. if you're older, you're shooting underneath, they sprawl on you, front headlock risk, all this stuff is really difficult to get out of and it's very, very energy consuming. Also, it's harder on with the gi on because you get stuffed. Harder There's the so many handles to stop you. Yep. And if yeah. you go within range, they get gripped and now you yeah. can't connect your hands around their yeah. legs or whatnot. And this is the thing. They're not fast and explosive enough. I'm not saying everybody, okay? Easy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but if you're in that primary demographic, yeah. if you're a late 30s, mid 30s guy who's never really done other grappling arts, you don't have a fast enough drop step to shoot by those hands yeah. from a distance. Yeah. So naturally, without a gripping game, you're going to lock up 50-50, face each other, two strong guys, most likely saw stuff. They're going to try <laughs> to be pushing and pulling and now they're like, wow, I got to learn judo. That's really tiring too, you know. That, really, really that, tiring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So, do you? So let's approach from this angle. So now you are teaching judo at a beach just school. Essentials, is it? Am I, I teach that? A, yeah, essential. Yeah, yeah, essential. So, and <coughs> assuming that a lot of your students are in this demographic, like yeah. intermediate BJJ or is trying yeah. to learn judo. So, what are some of the things you teach? You know, obviously, I guess we could <coughs> do it like this. Uh, the same way if you want to learn let's touch this first if you want to learn judo as uh judo uh, take some elements from judo to help your bjj game mm, for those people yeah. yeah so what do you recommend yeah let's go with that first yeah, yeah. <clears throat> i think once you develop a traditional judo game yeah the sky's the limit right in terms of like reactions yeah. actions putting moves together combinations yeah. you're never going to get to that because you're not going to have a very refined defensive system when you're going against a guy who's inexperienced yeah right? yeah take like a boxer going in with another box who's experienced there's a lot of nuanced stuff going on feints like setting yeah. stuff up you know what i mean timing counters yeah. all this stuff as opposed to like you're going against a street fighter he's going to take one wild swing yeah. you know all that intricate stuff kind of goes out the window right you know? right so similarly with judo, those little feints and then the little nuanced stuff might not really help you because they're not going to react. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to be able to process like, oh, what was the immediate threat? You know yeah. what I mean? Fake turn Tanya Toshi. They've never they really seen react. a fake yeah. turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like they might just drop to their knees yeah. if that happens. You know what I mean? So what are the ways you could gain a reaction first and foremost in BJJ from your opponent? And then what are the moves that are going to supplement that reaction? Mm -hmm. is like sort of my number one thing when it comes to jiu -jitsu, helping jiu-jitsu guys supplement with judo. Yeah, I you see. Know? So what is the number one thing that transitions to the ground is guard pulling. Yeah. And when you pull guard, everyone knows what it is. They keep their posture up. They reach out and grab a leg to go headquarters and whatnot. Yeah. So that's the reaction that we're looking for. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So 50-50, quick fake guard pull. They posture up. 
and then you cut mm. a sleeve, go Kochi Ochi, or you go leg pick. Mm. That's like the easiest low hanging fruit. So almost like you do the fake tomoe nugget and then push forward. Yeah. I see. Yes. And that's why Tomonage is so hard to hit on jiu-jitsu guys. Because they know they that's the first defense they learn, the guard pulling. Because it's yeah. very similar yeah. to the reaction for guard pulling. Guard yeah. pull defense and then Tomonage defense Pretty are much, almost yeah. the same. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. So when a judo guy who has judo experience like, oh, this guy sucks at judo, I'm going to throw him Tomonage, it's not easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you have guys that pull right versus right mm. with their right leg collar hand side guys that pull right for the side with their sleeve hand side mm. and you got guys who just switch grips for no apparent reason yeah. pull with their right leg and yeah. then guys who switch for no apparent reason pull with their left leg yeah so all the different variation and entries for tomonage straight back yoko yoko with different grip configurations jiu-jitsu guys are just capable of reacting to those right 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 even if you have a pretty good tomonage game yeah yeah. You know, obviously like with the momentum and then with it integrated with Kochi, Ochi and stuff like that, it's you can not, make it happen. Yeah. You can make it happen, right? It's a little bit, you know? Yeah. But this is the thing, right? Like because you could be in a very defensive posture and stand up mm. and Kochi, Ochi, people aren't really good at it. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's no like it's one set like, "Oh, this guy's going to pull guard, I'm going to defend it." Mm-hmm. So if you just go to Monage, it's very very difficult and Kochi, Ochi is not as easily accessible. Yeah. Because of the posture. Yeah. And there's no penalties. Right. You know right. what I mean? Every rule set of every grappling thing is dependent on the rule set, what forces them to do what. Yeah. Yeah. Even boxing, right? It's like, oh, you're close enough, you could hug the guy, then we're just going to break you apart. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But if you're in there and you can kind of push and shove and throw forearms and like yeah. keep doing, et cetera, et cetera, it's going to change the game. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine if boxing, like if you. Go for a clinch and hug them. You get a penalty every time. Oof, How that, different would yeah. the boxing look like? I wonder why. Yeah, I always wonder why they just yeah. allow the clinching like that. That should be a criticism. Yeah. Because if they're f- so freaking quick, they as in the martial arts community, yeah. to say like, oh, jiu-jitsu guys pull guard, you can't do that shit. Oh, judo guys, you can't <laughs> grab legs. That's not a complete martial art. How come no one criticizes the clinch in boxing then? Ooh, we might get some reaction out of this. I, I don't know enough about boxing. Maybe there's safety concerns. Who knows? But, I mean, all the rules are safety concerns in a way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see. Comment down below. Tell us yeah, how wrong yeah. we are about boxing. But we think clinching should go. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to criticize boxing, like, yes, these kinds of defenses, yeah. what about without the glove? Yeah. You know, having a 16-ounce glove, 14-ounce glove, that creates a little bit more... Cushion, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's different, you know? <laughs> yeah, we're not here to shit on boxing, though. <laughs> no, no, yeah, we're, we're yeah. talking about how can we incorporate judo into BJJ. So, yeah, so basically, you usually start with a fake guard pull and then uh, pushing throw, like a backward Pushing throw, throw yeah, yeah. or gaining hand position. Yeah. Right. Because whenever you go guard, you do generally release yeah. and bring your hands down to work the legs to pass the legs. Yeah. Right. So you're gonna use that sort of reaction to gain hand position, mm-hmm. right? And then you could snap them down, sidestep, create angles. Yeah. And then what I suggest to all the guys is that if you're gonna pull guard, might as well make it a tomonage. Yeah. So you get, or what get they the, call yeah. a balloon sweep. A balloon right? sweep. That's what they call it, like okay. overhead sweep or whatever it is. Oh. Balloons are overhead sweep. So now... Basically, you get the you get <coughs> back on top instead of... Yeah. yeah. So if you fail, then all of a so sudden... It's a guard yeah. pull. Yeah. Essentially a guard pull. Yeah. So when you're doing judo training, you go yeah. into a <clears throat> dojo, and then you want to be attacking tomonagis all the time, but you don't want to be a drop and flopper. So that's why you have to learn the rules of the game a yeah. little bit first, right? Because, and you have to respect the rules. Oh, why can't you just do Tomonage 10 times in a practice? You know, oh, this is stupid. This is stupid. It's like, oh, no, there's a lot of stupid things in every martial art that you could criticize. And you're not like being boxing. A, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not being a good uh, practice partner. Like, if you spam Sayori Nage or if you spam, you yeah. know, if you keep flopping on the ground, it's not, you know, you're not there to learn, really. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So I, I will go with that. And, but, you know, this is the issue, right? You go into a dojo, generally speaking, like average dojo in the United States, how many of them are specialized Tomonage guys? Very, no, yeah. very unlikely. Yeah. Unlike BJJ, who become naturally specialized in Tomonage defense. <coughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're never going to, you know, so that's why you kind of have to do your little own research 
And you have to buy my Tomonage instructional. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but how would you go if you walk into judo school and then say, "Hey, I, I'm a BJJ guy, but I want to learn, you know, judo so that I can get better." But then you listen. You also listen to Shintaro the Shintaro Higashi show. And it's like, "Hey, I'm gonna practice the fake guard pull and then coach Gary." And then go to Monagi after that. Yeah, like is yeah. it? I mean, I guess if you <coughs> string those things together, it's fine. I think that's a valid, yeah. It is, and you know what? You're gonna catch a lot of guys. Yeah, you're gonna catch I, a lot of judo guys because it's very unusual. Yeah, general intermediate judo guys <clears throat> aren't good at defending tomonage. And th- here's yeah. an interesting one. I'll, I'll say a very uh, controversial statement: BJJ guys are better at defending tomonage than judo guys, intermediate guys, not the yeah. high level guys. High level yeah. guys could cartwheel, no handed, <laughs> you know, forehead yeah. flip onto their head and then dive over. I'm not talking about the advanced guys or the super yeah. proficient, like the professionals. Average intermediate guy in a judo school uh-huh. versus average intermediate guy in a BJJ school, the BJJ guy is probably going to have better Tomonaga defense. Uh-huh. Hate to I, say I get it, that. You yeah, know? I mean, I mean yeah. just ex- another uh, exposure thing. Like, they're yeah. more exposed to it. Yeah. They are. And it's a surprising thing, you know? So why not leverage that? Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Why not leverage it? And you're not gonna be like inconveniencing anyone by doing like fake tomoe to kochi and then tomoe nagi. I think that's a legitimate yeah. combination. So I don't. But I'll tell you this: say anything. no one's gonna yeah. like you because you're a white belt with Throwing jiu-jitsu stuff. experience. Yeah, throwing green and brown belts in judo, <laughs> tomonage. Yeah, Oof. all because you listen to this podcast. Uh, yeah, wow, how great is that? It's like, it's like amazing. And after you throw that person for no. ippon, you say, "How'd you learn that?" Learned it from the Shintaro Higashi. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if they say, "Hey, here's a standing Ippon Sanagi," now for you to try to hit that in judo, impossible. For yeah. you to hit that in BJJ, impossible. impossible. It's yeah. going to take years. You know yeah. what I mean? So you want some level of success first, early on, to kind of get the ball rolling. So yeah. then you're inclined to use those advantages, yeah. and now all of a sudden people fear, Kochi, Ochi, Tomonage, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which may open up a Iponsenagi. Yeah. And then that's how you grow your game. Like that's how you grow your game. Yeah. You have to grow it in a cohesive manner. Way. Yeah. Yeah, that's you a know? great point. I always tell people that like don't try to like go out and try to emulate Gordon Ryan right away. He got no. there because he encountered all these difficulties and he's trying to solve the problem as you go. Yes. Yeah. Um all right, so let's flip the coin and then go to the other side. So you're a BJJ guy and then you saw some you saw Shintaro Higashi video, no. and I'm like, oh my god, I want to learn that. I want to learn yeah. judo as for judo. How would you yeah. recommend approaching that? Well, BJJ go wanted to learn judo for judo. You just go in there and do everything else that all the judo guys are doing. You know, hopefully you're in <laughs> yeah. a good school with good yeah. teachers. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and then just kind of do that. You know what I mean? So how? Well, I, I think, think I think for yeah. for Tachiwaza that's easy, but Nawaza like like how would, mm. how would you? Because you know, you guy going yeah. into judo, yeah. don't do leg locks. That's it. That's all. <laughs> Everything else is essentially the same. You're gonna smoke yeah. everyone in judo and right. yeah. but you'll find quickly that the rules are are, are a little bit different. Weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> you know what I mean? You'll be surprised yeah. when it's like, all right, let's roll, and then one People... person goes down and turtle. And they're yeah. like, what the hell is this? It's like, oh, you know, theoretically we miss a throw, and this is the position that we yeah. s- encounter the most when guys go for a tento and they go belly down. That's where we start. Mm-hmm. And if there's no action, we're going to switch. Yeah. And then they're going to be like, what? You know? But <laughs> keep an open mind. And then yeah. that they're playing a game with a different rule. Rules. Yeah. You know, the they're, goal isn't to like, you know what I mean? Find flaws like we did with boxing. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you about boxing. They tape their <laughs> fist shut too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's like, what? If you're ever in the streets, like you're going to tape your fist <laughs> shut so you can't grab the guy? That's why. Yeah, I, that's useful. I, well, that's why you know? I walk around with my gi on all the time. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyway, so okay, so I mean, it's pretty easy. I think if you're a BJJ guy, you've already know you already know what grappling is like. Yeah. Judo is the same. You just different rule set. Respect. Be respectful. Do the mm. things you want to. Uh, they tell you to do. Yeah. If you want to learn judo, it's judo. So should I do this yeah. next what? episode? Why boxing is not legit? Oh god. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It is legit. Yeah, well, it's legit. It is legit. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot I, of flaws that people. The same criticism for judo and BJJ is not being had on boxing. Mm, I and mean, you still hear it in the yeah. connotations like, "Oh yeah, I boxed for years. It's like I'm so tough and better than you." It's like, dude, 
you went to the 6 a.m. thing, you shadow box, you never really sparred before, you, you, you didn't box, bro. I think that sparring thing, well, most people, people Everyone like this, can. oh my God, he, he was a boxer. So that means literally nothing to me. <laughs> it's like, how many Do you see how have... unathletic that guy looks? <laughs> he's not an athlete. Like, he is not a martial artist. <laughs> he didn't box. He joined the boxing. He maybe, how do you know it's not cardio kickboxing that he did? How, and how many concussions has he had? I mean, that, that's a good measure. That's you know? right. That's yeah. right. You know, don't even get me started on that. We're going to do a whole separate episode. I love boxing, by the way. Yeah. <clears throat> boxing is great. It's it's one of the toughest sports, you know. I don't know but... about that. But, uh... <laughs> anyway, so, okay. Moving on. So now we cover both cases. And now let's talk about your experience teaching judo to BJJ people. Like, how, yeah. what have you noticed? What has? How do you structure <coughs> practice? Maybe we'll start with that. Like uh, I know you yeah. teach that fake arpo into that, yeah. but how do you teach? Have them do uchikomis or do you do no. more like BJJ style? You know, so at first I was trying to do more gripping stuff because I thought it'd be yeah. beneficial. But yeah. after doing lots and lots of BJJ, yeah, it's not helpful because the reactions aren't there, right? Mm. And grip fighting is not a thing in BJJ. In, you would uh, think in the groundwork it would be more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I'm trying to take that approach, and I said this in the last episode, as like sort of a, uh, you know, cerebral, like gap thing. Cere- yeah. yeah. Like a cerebral yeah. approach of like, yeah. right, <clears throat> I'm in knee cut, knee shield. Okay. Yeah. I have my leg anchored backwards. I have a lean forward lean. My goal is to put my hand on the collar to anchor myself. So yeah. I kind of go around the corner. Right. Yeah. And then like pull the person in so like he's crunched in, and then I can work the legs, whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? But. A good person is not going to let me get that collar, but yeah. like that intricate, like fighting for position, parrying the hand, going here, cutting the hand, using the other hand, making it look like I'm doing for something, and then putting the hand on and gaming it, right? Mm. So it's not really a thing. Grip fighting is not really a thing as it is in judo. Right, right. Yeah. So teaching grip fighting, I thought, would be a lot more intuitive for everybody and people would just get it. Mm. But it was much more difficult than I thought, you know? I see. So it's actually better. To show, like, all right, everyone reaches with their right hand with a lead leg, right? Lead leg, right? Yeah. Lead yeah. hand, which is generally a no-no in most grappling. In yeah. wrestling, judo, and sambo. They're like, don't do that. Because you get, you can just You expose grab your lead yeah, leg. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You expose your lead leg. You give the dominant hand away, essentially. Yeah. And so it's like the worst thing you could touch do. But getting these guys to not do that was very difficult, too. Mm. So we're building a game around doing that, right? Or letting the other guy do it and accepting it, and then ad- incrementally advancing from there and using that. I see. I to see. their advantage. So like I'm really changing sort of like the gripping curriculum and the approach to looking for takedowns from there. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's one thing. Doing standing uchikomi for uchimara or sotogari is going to be very uh, useless. Yeah. <laughs> for these guys because you're never in that upright position. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't mean Uchimara is useless. Uchimara is very, very useful. You made a Kenke Uchimara video. Recently. For Jiu-Jitsu yeah. guys specifically. Yeah. And it's yeah. a backstep Uchimara where you spin yeah. to the backside, right? Spinning away so you don't have to dive underneath. Yeah. You don't have to expose your back. You're using your hand as a frame because you're working to the outside. Right. And they understand framing very well. Yeah. But that happens so, a lot on the ground. Yeah. Yes. So letting the guy put their hand on the collar, the wrong side hand, right? Mm-hmm. And then gaining an advantage there, putting your second hand on where you're kind of winning already, right? And then snapping them down, faking guard pull, and then circling to the outside and entering Uchimara is probably like the most useful thing a BJJ guy learned from judo. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I do, and I just let them work that. And then it's like, okay, now your hand's a little bit higher. So now you could drop to your knee and go ankle pick here, ankle pick there. Or you could go guard pull there. So it's always sort of in like a jiu-jitsu context that I'm teaching. Right. Right. And yes, we do some throws at the end and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I never let them do randori. Oh, you don't do randori? Zero randori in my class. Oh, wait. Because they're using this as a supplement to their jiu-jitsu training. Right. If they're doing randori and they're getting injured in my class, that's like the worst thing ever. You know, oh. so do you even I do just ground, want to give them ground. No, not no in my Oh, okay. It's literally one hour of drills and skills. Me teaching, oh. drill it. Teach, drill. Teach, drill. Teach, drill. So it's very, very unique, and I think it's you know extremely valuable class. Yeah, it's not very well attended. <laughs> but we do have a very good you know, and the timing is also it's like at a weird time. It's like five forty-five yeah, yeah, yeah. on a Thursday. 
and it's this kind of one-off class and it's like also corresponding with like the you know advanced yeah there's like a little bit of an overlap there but we do have a core group of guys that are there doing it yeah and i'm just extremely happy with the guys that are on the map there with that how long have you been teaching now probably like six months or so ah dude i mean i feel like once those core guys become yeah. proficient and they start yeah you know steamrolling people the come. issue is this yeah they do my class they go to the advanced class all right let's let's roll yeah. uh-huh. and there's 70 guys on the mat there's no space to do so stand the, up, uh... really. and then the moment they show any sort of real proficiency with like oh shut the sand go hand yeah. high fix you know tomonage the guy's Carpool. like oh my god and then they just drop to the floor and now they don't get to work it but every now and then they yeah. do, and then they'll yeah. launch someone, and then those guys will come back. Oh, wow, I hit that thing yesterday. And I'm like, yo, that's amazing. And it's a, it's a great thing. Um, but it really is catered to jiu-jitsu guys, the way I'm teaching this class. Right. It's literally judo for jiu-jitsu, and it's not something that someone taught me how to do it. I'm figuring it out as I yeah. go. Because I don't think there's a lot of judo instructors. There's a lot of like judo for BJJ classes that I've seen out there, yeah. and they've all sucked. I shouldn't say that. But I, I've never seen anyone that's like really good. I'm like, oh. But now that I'm proficient in BJJ as well, right? You can figure it out. I could yeah. say that now yeah. with 100% confidence. I could say yeah. I'm proficient in BJJ by anyone's standards. Um, now I could really cater my judo expertise because at right. judo, I'm an expert. I'm mm-hmm. not just proficient. I'm an expert, right? And I'm a master teacher. Yeah. So now I can use red, that. white, red, and, white. <laughs> that's right. And then I can use that to like cater something specifically for that crowd. And I think one day it'll be very valuable. And then I think maybe like you know, yeah, it'd be useful to the entire grappling community. I think. Yeah. You know? That's um. How do you solve the exposure problem? Like with BJJ, the way it's taught, with the way the rules are, like you just don't yeah. get exposed to. No, but we'll do like lots yeah. of drills in this setting, right? Where yeah. I'm showing the techniques, showing, uh, you know, forcing these reactions. And usually it's a guard pull reaction. And then, yeah. so because they're doing it for an hour, right? When they encounter that 10 second, 15 second yeah. slot, right? Where they're like, oh, this, this is, yeah. I've seen this before. Yeah. I've been here before. I spent, you know, an hour, once a week, like I do an hour of this. And then if they can pull the trigger, they're going to slam these guys. I see. So that's so, how, I see. That's how yeah. you get away with not doing yeah. randori. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they don't need to do hard randori. Right. <laughs> in order to beat the guys that they're trying to beat using yeah. this skill. Right. So that's just, to me, is unnecessary risk, you mm. know, exposure to risk, you know. And that's the way I'm. I'm a true believer of this, you know. I I can already see like some judo purist kind of saying, "Oh, that's not judo you're teaching." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I it feel is like judo though. Yeah, it's it's we gotta get. Did out you not of hear mindset. Tomonage, Kochi, <laughs> gripping, hand <laughs> yeah. position, Uchimana, backstep Uchimana, Ken Ken Uchimana, finish. Yeah, you know, can't finish There's Ken Ken no... Uchimana, cross body Ochi. That's pure judo, judo in the purest way yeah you know it's just designed for a different rule set yeah using different reactions that might be more apparent right you i mean that, that kind of i think we have to see it as like that what is pure this, judo that's that's yeah, my question those guys this shows yeah. the versatility of judo that it can be applied yeah. in a lot of the different out grappling arts I, yeah. i've seen a lot of like high level bjj people Hitting Uchimaras and uh, yeah, it's the thing. They're getting good. Yeah, Harai Goshi, and they're like, wow, that's not shabby. Like really good. I yeah, don't think I can do Justin that. Justin Flores yeah. is teaching judo to Keenan Cornelius and their group. Mm. Dubious Dom's a guy who does atos, you know, in California yeah. and San Diego, and he's doing a lot of judo now. Let me tell you, yeah. I, I, when I went to BJJ classes and like doing no gi, <coughs> I, I naturally I try to do uchimaras but i can't hit it as well as these guys in that setting nogi setting it's 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 very it's a oh nogi yeah yeah like very different you know different yeah, yeah so they're doing something great and i think yeah. that shows the versatility speaks to the, the versatility of judo all yeah, right for sure cool that's very it was very interesting to hear your perspective on teaching judo for intermediate bjjrs i hope yeah. Yeah. everyone found this helpful yeah. um all right, anything else? No, man. Thank you cool. so much for listening. And then please find us on social. Yeah. And uh, yeah, all the stuff that I mentioned, it's video product somewhere on the internet. So go seek that out. Thank you guys for listening. Yeah. As cool. always, I'm 
very grateful. Yeah, thank you so much, yeah. and we'll see you guys in the next episode.